Glory to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today we are very grateful that Vladika Lazar is recovering, that he's praying for us today. And this is a mercy of God. Blessed are the merciful. They shall obtain mercy. Be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. In today's reading from the Gospel, we have some of the catechism of our Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples. Often the Gospel readings are about the stories of the mercy of Jesus Christ as he ministers healing and love and forgiveness to those around him. But in today's Gospel reading, we have his teachings on the matter. When he says, be merciful, as your heavenly Father is merciful, it calls into mind those passages from the book of Leviticus where we hear, be holy as I am holy. Or even in the Gospel of Matthew, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. But in this Gospel reading, we find out what the perfection of holiness is. The perfection of holiness is the mercy of God. And then our Lord explains what this mercy looks like. That we have a God who is giving and forgiving. This is the mercy of God. And we're called to be like this Father, but in the call to be like this Father in heaven, we also find out what the Father in heaven is truly like. That our Lord Jesus Christ reveals the Father as the perfection of holiness, which is mercy and compassion, giving and forgiving. First, a few words about how the Father in heaven gives. He does not give like those in the world who offer a banquet, expecting to be invited back. Or giving a loan, expecting to be paid back. Or giving a blessing, expecting to be blessed back. Our Lord Jesus Christ says anybody can do that. In fact, even the wicked do that. In fact, perhaps especially the wicked do that. There is always a hook. There is always an expectation of payback. But our Lord Jesus Christ has shown us that the Father in heaven gives to those who could never pay him back. Indeed, isn't all that we have a gift from God? Or perhaps we believe that God owes us something, and that he needs to repay us. And if so, we might suggest writing an invoice and giving it to God. And tell him, here's what you owe me. And as we do this little exercise, we, we realize God owes us nothing, but he has given us everything. And for this, we're incredibly grateful. Because our Lord Jesus Christ has shown us that the Father in heaven does not only give to those who deserve it. He does not only give to those who are righteous, but he gives to all. He gives to the poor. He gives to those who could never pay him back. And in fact, in this text... The Gospel reading says he even gives to the ungrateful and the wicked. And if we want to see how this is true, we look at the rain that falls on the crops of the righteous and the unrighteous. We look at the sunshine as the grace of God glows upon the righteous and the wicked. And we might even be a little bit offended, like the Pharisees were, that God would be revealed as indiscriminate in his kindness. How dare he be good to those who aren't like me? And yet he is. And isn't that good for us? And so we receive the gifts of God today, and we hear in this a challenge from the church fathers to say, whatever you thought were loans, make them gifts. Make them gifts. 
And in so doing, perhaps this is how we repay the Father in heaven. By giving deposits to the poor and to those who are destitute and those who are in need and those who need hospitality. Our Father in heaven is not only merciful in his giving, but he's also merciful in his forgiving. He forgives all. He forgives those like us who could not make it right, who could not pay for our own sins, who could not give restitution and pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. Rather, he's, he's forgiving not only to friends and family and brothers and sisters, but even forgiving to enemies. While we were still enemies, Christ died for us. While we were still ignorant, Christ forgave us. And in so doing, the cross becomes a revelation of this forgiving Father. Sometimes we think about enemies that we would have trouble forgiving. And yet we see the Lord Jesus Christ, even while he's being crucified, forgiving those who had conspired to kill him. And yet, let's not think too big. What about our little enemies? Our brothers and our sisters who offend us with mild words. And isn't it true that sometimes our brothers and sisters seem to be the real enemy? If we think about day to day, even back to the very first murder was of a brother on a brother. When Cain killed Abel. But even today, most violence happens by people who know each other sometimes who are in the same church or the same family. And so we must use the church, use this church family as a greenhouse for forgiveness on the little things so that when real persecution comes, we will have grown in forgiveness to be like our Lord and to be merciful to our enemies as the Lord was merciful to His. St. John of Antioch says that we're to notice in this passage that our Lord Jesus Christ does not only say, don't hate. He says, love, and bless, and pray, and do good to those who don't treat you well. Of course, this is a big challenge. In fact, it's a cross, a cross that our Lord Jesus Christ has said, take up and follow me. He also says, remember that your mouths were not given to you as asps or snakes with which to spew venom on others, but rather that your mouth has been given to you as a healer to give words of kindness and compassion and to douse the fires of hatred with gentleness and compassion. Be merciful as your Heavenly Father is merciful. I also want to share some words from Vladika Lazar about this text. As he's been in the hospital, we're so glad that he's recovering, but when he didn't know if he would, he called me close to the bed and shared these words about this text. And they're meant for us as a congregation today. There is nothing more important than forgiveness. Faith and forgiveness are the surest imitation of Christ, but we need to pray for grace, to have enough love to forgive. The whole gospel is summarized in the parable of the prodigal son. If people could only understand that it's about God and not the son, that everything is forgiven. Everything. If Christ can say, Father, forgive them, even from the cross, we have no excuse for not forgiving people. God doesn't punish. God never harms his people. The trouble is that he respects our choices. That's where punishment comes in. It's difficult because sometimes the fathers speak about punishment and at other times about forgiveness. But ultimate punishment would be the radiance and glory of the love of Christ if somehow it were possible that you had to spend eternity without it. We need to be compassionate, because sin is an illness. 
Someone said to me, people don't go to hell because they're sick, but because they're bad. I was tem tempted to say, but I didn't. Send a postcard. In confession, the priest says, I, an unworthy servant, have no power to forgive sin, but God does. And the priests are agents communicating God's forgiveness. The priest's job is to help people to forgive themselves so that they don't get sick with guilt. To ask God's forgiveness and know that you have it. Don't forget that you too are another man's servant, so don't be so hard on yourself that guilt makes you sick. When the Lord says, vengeance is mine, it's not that God takes vengeance, but rather that we aren't worthy of revenge, and so he withholds it from us. God doesn't take vengeance, he simply withholds it. We wouldn't know what to do with it anyway. And so the psalmist says, thy mercy will pursue me. Not merely follow me, but mercy chases you and wants to catch you. The wicked conscience is the fire that never dies. People pass their own sentence by the way they judge. But there is such thing as a wicked conscience. If you think as God, that God is evil, if you make God evil, if we create God in the image of our own hearts, then God is not just a giant person, but God is a giant me. Some act as if God were waiting for the end of the world to punish everyone, by which they mean everyone who disagrees with me. No, God is love. It is not possible to love and want vengeance. What God has for us is nothing but grace, mercy, and love. Brothers and sisters, be merciful, as your Heavenly Father is merciful. Amen. Amen. Amen.